One of the big ideas in calculus is to study rates of change, and in particular, instantaneous rates of change. We begin the discussion of instantaneous rates of change with average rates of change, and we begin that discussion with the average velocity, which is, which is an average rate of change. It is, the change in, it is measured by the change in distance divided by the change in time. And the reason we start with this example is because it's a concept that we are all intuitively familiar with. For example, if I told you that I traveled between Austin and Houston regularly, and that the distance between those two cities is 180 miles, and it takes me three hours to travel that distance, then you would say, well, your average velocity on those trips is the total distance traveled, so 180 miles, divided by the total time, which was three hours, and that gives me 60 miles per hour. We do this kind of calculation all the time in our head. So let's look at another example of a particle. So let's assume that there's a particle that's moving in a straight line and has its position function as s of t equals 4t squared plus 3 where time is measured in seconds and position is measured in feet. So that means that given a particular time, the position of the particle is measured by plugging that time into this formula. So the question is, is what is the average velocity of this particle on the time interval 2 to 4? So what's the average velocity of the particle as it moves on its, on its path between the time 2 and 4? Well, let's see if we can calculate that. So the average velocity, remember, is equal to the change in distance divided by the change in time. So in this particular example, it's going to be the position at 4 seconds minus the position at 2 seconds. So there's my change in distance divided by the change in time, 4 minus 2. So plugging this into my formula, I get 64 plus 3 minus 16 plus 3. And all that's divided by 2. Doing some quick calculations, I see that I get 48 divided by 2, or 24 feet per second. So my particle travels at an average velocity of 24 feet per second on the time interval 2 to 4. So what does this mean graphically? Well, here is the graph of our particular position function. So when time is 2, my position is 19 feet. When time is 4, my pos position is 67 feet. Okay, and so what we found on the last page was that the average velocity was equal to 24 feet per second. And remember how we did that. It was the change in the position divided by the change in time. So if I were to draw this little triangle right here, that is the change in position, and this is the change in time. And if I let this point right here be P, and this point right here be Q, then this secant line that connects P to Q has slope equal to 24 feet per second. And you should be able to see this directly. So the slope of this line right here is the change in y over the change in x. And in this case, the change in position divided by the change in time. So if this is a position function with respect to time, then this slope of this tan uh, secant line connecting these points measures the average velocity on that time interval. Now, another question that you might ask is, well, that's, that's good that it's between 2 and 4, I, the particle traveled 24 feet per second, but that doesn't mean the particle traveled 24 feet per second at every given time between 2 and 4. It just means that over that time interval, that was the average velocity. So I want to know what the velocity is at time 2. And so that's a different question altogether, and it's one we're going to tackle in the next video.